Hey to all of you out there in internet land and those of you who I am teaching and who are watching this as a recap. Wow. Do you ever wake up wondering what fractions are? Me, all of the time. And the only reason is because I'm generally hungry and it reminds me of pizza. Whole new discussion. And if it's not pizza, it's chocolate. Because fractions, as far as I'm concerned, are all pizza and chocolate. Right. Those of you who I am teaching and who are suffering through my dreadful, dreadful lessons are going to be asked to do this. Now, the Year 7 textbook, Chapter 4, 4A, and what does this EOP mean? Well, EOP means every other part. So you don't have to do every single question. What would be the sense in that if you can do them? Well, let's move on. So you're going to do questions 1, 2, 3, 5, EOP, 6, 7, EOP, 8, 10. And those of you who really wish the challenge, and I am suggesting all of you should express, uh, should want the challenge, can have a go at the extension questions. Okay, so let's recap what we learned way, way back in junior school. Now, when we weren't learned it in primary school or junior school, we learned lots and lots of rules, which we probably don't remember properly. They get used in the wrong ways, and we get horrible answers. And that's why when I say to students, Hey guys, today we're going to do fractions. You guys tend to go, oh, I know fractions. I hate fractions. It's too hard. Can we do something else like colouring in? And I'm like, well, fractions is actually colouring in. But that's a whole new discussion. So, as far as I'm concerned, ladies and gentlemen, pizza is all about what? Fractions is all about pizza and friends. I'll be there for you. Now, I so desperately wanted to burst into song, but decided not to. Okay. We'll come back to the pizza and friends in a moment, but basic stuff you need to know, and there's only two things really for fractions you need to know, and that is this. Which part of it is a numerator, and which part of it is the denominator? And as my wonderful little graph says here, the top number is the numerator, and the bottom number is the denominator. Well, how do we remember this stuff? It just so happens, ladies and gentlemen, that numerator and denominator, well, D stands for down, and numerator stands for NUP. Now, I don't know why someone thinks NUP would be a good thing to actually call something, because NUP and UP. But anyway, maybe we'll just go the denominator, which begins with D, is on the D bottom. See, you're not helping yourself here, Darren, are you? So the denominator is the bottom number. And actually, that's the one that tends to cause people the most issues. Have you wondered about how language confuses as well? Barry, 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 Barry has been at it again, as far as I'm concerned. In the UK, which you can tell I used to be from, it's hard, I know, it's a stretch, because I have a very strong Australian accent now. But in the UK, we used to call fractions where the top number is bigger than the bottom number, top heavy. I don't know about you, that sort of makes sense. If I have the fraction 5 over 4, well, the bigger number is top, the top is heavy. If it's top heavy, it's going to fall over. Whole new discussion. But in Australia, you call a fraction where the top number is bigger than the bottom number an improper fraction. I don't know. If I had 8 over 7, I'm not going to look at that and go, well, you're looking terribly improper today. But maybe, who knows, life moves on. So depending on where you're watching this video, just know that in the UK and certain other countries, they call them top heavy. Over here in uh, Australia, we call them improper fractions. And here are some great examples of improper fractions. Yes, what do we notice? The top number is always bigger than the bottom number. Well, why would these be useful to anything? Well, they come useful later on when we start multiplying and dividing things because it makes life easier for us. But here we go, whole numbers. You might think that whole numbers are just whole numbers. Well, maths actually is a big fat trick, which we can write whole numbers in lots of different ways. The first way is obviously 4. That's pretty much a whole number, as is 3, 7, 12, 149, which happens to be my age. Yes, I'm old. But we can actually write a fraction, a whole number, sorry, as a fraction by dividing it by 1. Now, you're going to say, you what? And I'm going to say, absolutely. Think about it. What is 4 divided by 1? Because that's all this means, 4 divided by 1. If anyone hasn't worked out yet that that little sign there is a divide sign, woo, your calculator even tries to help you by saying the divide sign actually looks like a fraction. This dot here, which is generally normally colored in, just means numbers. So 3, line 4, hello, divide. So this middle line here is a divide sign. We'll come back to it later. But what is 4 divided by 1? It's 4. I've got 4 sweeties, and I'm going to share it with one person. How many sweeties do they get? Uh, 4. 8 divided by 2, or 
Oh, hold on a moment. What have we done here? We've used equivalent fractions. What are equivalent fractions? It's where we basically change the numbers, both the numerator and the denominator, and we still keep the same size of the fraction. If I've got eight friends, sorry, if I've got eight sweeties and two friends, then we're going to get four sweets each again. So lots of different ways, and sometimes it helps us to change things. Lots of times we like to do things visually. We like to see what things look like. So we can express fractions in diagram form. And this is where we come back to pizza. Wow, it's Saturday morning, Sunday, Sunday morning at the moment as I'm recording this. And it's very early and I'm already thinking about pizza. This is not going to end well. So we can think of fractions as pizzas and slices. Right, so the great thing about fractions is this bottom number here teaches you how many slices my whole pizza is going to be cut into. So think about that bottom number as just how many slices go in a box, or how many slices a whole pizza. So here is a pizza, which I can very simply cut into quarters. And how do I express three quarters? Well, actually, I can, in this situation, just shade in three of those pieces. Why three? Well, because the numerator tells you how many pieces to do. So it basically says three out of four. <gasps> Maths language. Are you telling me that line can also stand for out of? Oh yes, I should go, go. So if we now look at this, five over eight, how many slices of pizza can I splice it into? Well, the bottom number says eight, so I'm gonna cut it into eight. That was a horrible slice of pizza. I don't know who's gonna get this middle bit here, but let's just pretend that I can draw. So there's my eight slices from the bottom. How many I'm gonna shade in? Well, I don't know. Maybe five, one, deux. Trois, quatre, and think. All right, hopefully that was correct for French. One, two, three, four, five. There we go, I've shaded in. And no different from nine on 12. It just means my pizza's got to be cut into 12 pieces. This is going to be really challenging. I've got to try and cut this into two, three, six, boing, 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 and boing. Fingers crossed there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve pieces. Thank you. Well done. So there's my twelve pieces. And I'm just going to cut it. Eins, zwei, drei, vier, fünf, six, sieben, acht, und neun. All right. That language, for those of you who are out there, is German. And before those of you who start trying to converse with me in either Spanish, French, or German, I can only do my numbers. I'm really sorry. So visually representing these is easy, but it doesn't just have to be with pizza. We can do it with blocks of chocolates too, and we can do this in such a funky way, it's great. Now, the question's asking us to find three different ways of expressing three quarters, not using fractions, uh, sorry, not using pizza. Here we go. So I suppose the first one is, I'm gonna have a block of chocolate that's split up into four pieces. That's my idea of chocolate, four really big pieces. So again, it tells me I've got to do three quarters. So that means I'm going to just color in three out of the four. Well, thank you very much. That's number one done. But I want to come up with a different way. And this is where it says, when we go back to uh, fractions being three out of four, it means for every four pieces, I'm going to color three. That's all three quarters mean. For every four pieces, I'm going to write this for every four pieces, I'm going to color three. So imagine I have my block of chocolate now with eight pieces in it, which again is much more my style of chocolate, much more pieces, thank you very much. Well, if I'm gonna color in three for every four, I'm actually gonna start thinking of my block of chocolate in sections of four. So there's four and there's four. So I'm gonna color one, two, three pieces of that block, and one, two, three pieces of that block. Now, it doesn't actually matter which three you color in, so long as you have six pieces colored in. So not only do we have three quarters of my chocolate bar colored in, I actually also have six out of eight. Oh, equivalent fractions! So we're saying that three over four is exactly the same as six out of eight. Wow. So how else can I draw three out of four? Well, imagine then I now have 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16. What's that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12. So let's say I've got 12 blocks of chocolate and I still want to colour in three quarters. How do I do it? Well, I'm looking for three out of every four. And it just so happens this diagram has nice little ways that I can find chunks of floor for chocolates. So just I'm going to choose any three to colour in on each of them. It doesn't really matter so long as I colour in three. So there's three. Uh, let's do this one, two, three. And one, two, three. They don't all have to be in a line. It's beautiful. It's artistic. It's expressive. It's colouring in. It's art. So what do I actually find? Well, there's three quarters coloured in, but we also know that if I have 12 blocks in total, then I have 9 out of 12, which must be exactly the same as three quarters. We've just proven that because we've coloured in three of every four. They say this fraction stuff is difficult. All right, so we're just going to recap very quickly expressing fractions on a number line. If you remember, we have a number line. Generally speaking, we start them go between 0 and 1, but that's not always the case. And we look at this bottom number here, and that tells us how many gaps we have to have. Well, if there are five gaps, it means we're going to draw four small marks. Now, what do I mean by that? 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, they're all supposed to be equal widths, and I obviously haven't made them equal widths, but I can't do anything about that at this moment in time. So, how many gaps will we have? One gap, two gaps, three gap, four gap, five gap. That's good. That means my line has now been split into fifths, because I've got to have five gaps, and there's four little lines will give me those five gaps. And so I now want to put them there two fifths and four fifths. Well, this little mark here must be one fifth, so this mark here must be two fifths. That mark there must be three, that mark must be four, and hence we have five. So remember, splitting things into these gaps and putting them on number lines is just awesome. But sometimes we need to do things backwards. So we have to understand uh, when to do these things backwards. So for example, what if I was asked to find the fraction which is being represented by the letter on the following number line? Here we go. I'm just going to draw a number line, zero and one. All right, how many little tick marks did I just draw? Well, we can count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven little tick marks, which means there are how many gaps? Eight gaps. Marvelous. There's always one more. So I now know that my fraction, I don't even need to, I haven't even drawn anything on there at the moment, but I know that I've got eight little gaps, so it's got to be out of eighths. So let's just do this one here. I'm just going to put, did I say X? Oh, I'm just going to draw a little triangle. Let's do X on my number line. Now all I need to do is just count. So one, two, three, four, five. That must be five on eight. So ladies and gentlemen, five on eight. So you've got to be able to see things forwards and backwards. All right, count the number of spaces between the whole numbers. It gives us a clue. Let's just do one more. Let's just be tricky and go between one and two. Ooh, tricky. Five little ticks. Must be sixths. Ah, now, here we go. So, ooh, let's just put a uh, X here. So, this has to be one sixth, two sixths, three sixths, four sixths. Ooh, what am I doing? It's got to be a six and five sixths. Right, well, there we go. So, do I write my answer then as two sixths? Uh, not really, because... It's actually starting at 1. So this value here is actually 1 and 1 sixth, 1 and 2 sixths, 1 and 3 sixths, 1 and 4 sixths, 1 and 5 sixths, and then we get to 2. So real answer is 1 and 2 sixths. <gasps> but I can cancel down. Remember, 2 on 6 can be simplified to 1 on 3. Why is that? Well, if I look at my chocolates being split in two, uh, six pieces and I color in one here and one here, then I actually can say, well, hold on a moment, I can split this up into blocks of three, which means I've got one out of three colored in. Wow, this stuff is awesome. So that's the basic stuff done. Now we're just gonna do a couple of wordy questions. We like words in math, why? Because we try and trick you, Barry, remember Barry, and if you haven't met Barry, oh, poor guy sits in an office with no windows and he just tries to make maths complicated for us. So 
Uh, let's see. Uh, we've got to write something as a fraction. It says example express. Oh, express. 23 out of 50. Out of. Hold on a moment. I'm sure I've seen the word out of somewhere before. Sorry for scrolling. Where did I see that word out of? Mm, come on, come on, come on, come on. I definitely wrote it in this lesson. What can we see? What can we see? Can you see it? Can you see it? There you go. Out of means divide. Oh, so whenever I see the out of, I can just write divide. So that's the same as 23 divided by 50. Well, that's not written as a fraction at the moment, but it's about to be because it means 23 out of 50. And that's literally it. Seeing those words out of make life so much easier. Other times you just have to know they want a fraction. So for example, 17 girls out of 40, oh, out of, out of, out of, out of, out of. Ooh, 17 divided by 40. I'm just going to write it. Just We're in a race around Morningstone. What fraction of the people were girls? Well, there were 17 girls out of 48 people. So, ladies and gentlemen, I just write 17 out of 48. Tick, smiley face. Now, Matt is going to try and trick you. This is the last example. If two players in a football team score a goal, what fractions of players didn't score a goal. Ah, now how many people are there in a football team? I have no idea, so I'm just going to choose 11. If it's not 11, don't, don't, just let's pretend there's 11. There's 11 in my football team. People were sick. So two players in a football team scored a goal, which would mean that nine players didn't score a goal. So there were nine out of 11, which is nine divided by 11, which I can write as 9 over 11. And thank you very much. Once again, full marks. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, subscribe. It, tell all your friends. I need the subscribers. Anyway, this has been What Are Fractions. It's been really good seeing you. I look forward to seeing you again next time. Hey guys, if you've enjoyed watching this video, why not tune in and subscribe to get updates of when I do other videos. Alternatively, click this video that's coming up now, or just zip on over to mathsguru.com, M-A-F-F-S, guru.com, where you can actually access all the videos in a nice, easy to use way.